All right, it's uh, I think about time to start, so I um, hereby welcome you to uh, my session, Laws, Dem Laws and Statistics, A Tale of Cookies. Some more people are coming in, everybody is more than welcome. Um, I hope everybody is having a nice conference, I know I am, so I hope that's a positive thing, hope a lot of interesting sessions you have witnessed and uh, I hope to provide one too. Um, cookie story, who am I? I'm not going to bore you too long with that, but I think there should always be a classical car in any presentation, especially my car. So uh, I have my own Drupal shop, I run project management, I do event management, I do basically everything I can find a client crazy enough to pay me for. Uh, I've been doing Drupal since about 4.3, uh, 4.4-ish, and uh, after Drupal 7 released, I s decided simply to drop basically all other CMSs or CMFs I was working with, which were at the time mainly Joomla, WordPress, Hippo, and Drupal, and uh, focus on Drupal entirely. Uh, actually, the biggest thing for me Drupal consists of is not only code, it's the community. It's the fact that here and in other events in the Netherlands, some of which I helped organize, were hundreds of enthusiasts all sharing knowledge, not in a co competitive sense of business way, but in an absolute competitive sense of intelligence and code quality and feature-wise, and that's what's Drupal for me. It's a fantastic ecosystem, so that's why I decided to spend my time on that. And then something happened. We had a cookie issue, or better, we had a telecommunications law uh, issue. This presentation mainly consists of two parts. I'm going to go into a bit of the legislational side of uh, telecommunication law, which is privacy related, and then I'm going to do the demo, and that is absolutely on purpose, keep the best for last so people don't run away, I hope. Um, but uh, telecommunication law is a European uh, issue, privacy related legislation is a European issue, which got translated into Dutch legislation, and this presentation is based on the Dutch implementation of it, that's not only because I'm Dutch, but I also think that the Dutch implementation is a remarkable uh, achievement in stupidity, actually, because it completely focused on the wrong issue, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, in the Dutch law, and also in the European law, <coughs> distinction of information uh, is made, which boils down to a distinction of two types of cookies. It's functionally necessary cookies, like session cookies, sh shopping carts, things you actually need to make your site work, and analytics uh, cookies. Those are, in the view of the lawmaker, optional and are privacy invasive by nature. The assumption is that analytics cookies, they contain identifiable information, or at least some means of identifying a profile which could be constructed to resemble a certain individual. And why is that profile interesting? Well, everybody knows in uh, e-commerce, the best thing uh, to know is simply who is your customer, what has he bought in the past, and uh, therefore we can offer him more. Uh, the assumption which is made under Dutch law is that analytics cookies always contain personally identifiable information until the webmaster or the owner can prove otherwise, well, which of course nobody's going to do, so that's what I meant with pretty much brain dead implementation. Um, then we have functional cookies, uh, and they're legal as long as the user is informed about them, so cookie control, something like that. Uh, any cookie resembling personal information, even if it's analytics or functional, should uh, be explicitly accepted by users. And <coughs> This is something uh, very hard wired in the Dutch legislation on this uh, issue. Now, this is, of course, very interesting because most systems utilize only one cookie to offer a lot of functionality. 
actually it's pretty bad practice to like force a lot of cookies on users so this ends up an interesting mess so it's 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 a nuisance it became pretty difficult to separate uh, this functionality because in an e-commerce site you also do uh, analytics of your client behavior uh, in a normal website you also build up uh, profiles of interesting users like targeted groups and stuff how does that relate to personally identifiable information and is that always a problem is or is it only a problem if a commercial interest is uh, actually there uh, in the privacy information a lot of sites actually offer uh, content to form profiles of the users visiting the content and which their business model is based on the fact that they can then sell the profiles. So is e-commerce always a direct thing or not? Well, Dutch uh, Public Television, which is one of those content providers who provides mainly knowledge, has no commercial interest or whatsoever. It's a public broadcasting service. They decided, well, we're going to play it safe. We're going to put a cookie wall in front of our website. But that's a problem because Dutch Public broadcasting like the BBC or any other ARD or ZDF something like that they have a public service to offer they have to provide public information without any constraints but now there was also legislation that demanded of them to provide information about the audience they were reaching with their communication because that actually gave them a reason of existence they had to measure that audience okay there you use cookies one side all right that became a total mess um, they put down a cookie wall and uh, visits of those site they dumped they they everybody simply went to uh, the commercial sites which simply ignored the law mostly website owners in Dutch in implementation of the law until recently uh, were also responsible for all cookies by the site uh, which were set by any site visit on one site anyway so they would also be responsible for uh, data leaks in like LinkedIn when they lose a couple of million passwords, which happens every couple of months, it seems. Uh, Facebook also gets hacked. Website owners themselves under Dutch law are responsible or could be held accountable. So this is really an incentive for Dutch shop owners and website owners to start thinking about what am I actually doing through my website? What is uh, what is it I offer in third party uh, means, for instance? Uh, is this Facebook like button only some sympathetic vote or is it potentially a legal minefield? So any site owner has to have a privacy or cookie statement stating what they do with their uh, information. So that's annoying. And then came the penalties, of course, because you cannot have legislation without any kind of enforcement. At first, enforcement was zilch naming shaming something like that uh, but actually data loss under european law is pretty much being uh, demanded that it, these incidents are being made public but for the dutch implementation this would also mean that if you would have a linkedin button on your website or something like that and linkedin would leak any information you as the website owner the visitor had visited should also inform the client like i said Dutch legislation, it's a mess. But it gets simpler, thank God. I'll get into that a bit later. But it also gets uh, severely uh, penalized uh, in future. In European Union, uh, Reading, the minister of, uh, of this uh, particular uh, area, she has uh, suggested in the current proposal a maximum of 1 million euros or 2% of the yearly turnover of a company as a uh, penalty on uh, data loss related incidents and that's quite a lot i mean websites web shops don't they may have pretty big turnovers but the margins on that turnover are pretty small so some hit on that particular margin it it hits hard so that this actually is pretty steep a penalty i think well, I'm asking how about usability penalties because all these cookie walls and stuff like that are also chasing users away. 
that's a different approach, but the biggest problem right now in the EU is the fact that all different countries have different implementations on this field. No, well, actually it became even more confusing in the Netherlands, bear with me, but now it gets a little clearer because uh, right now there are being made two uh, pretty big changes in the interpretation of the law that I referred to earlier. Actually, uh, information domains are being split in two uh, domains. It's going to be first party and third party uh, domains. So anything you use and you store yourself for your own in-house purposes, you can pretty much do without that much uh, trouble. Of course, you still have to comply. If you have a data loss, you have to publish it. But if you keep it in the house, you don't have to bother your user with it too much, which is a very good thing, I think, because nobody likes having to go through cookie walls to get to the web shop to order that new fantastic gadget. Uh, and you have third party uh, cookies or third party information uh, domain, which basically is everything else. Um, the review phase for this law has ended at 1st of July and it has still to be made into effect, but this is pretty much the way it looked like it's going right now in the EU as well. So, and actually I think this makes sense. I mean, every, everything you can control yourself, anything you can host on your own servers, or at least keep in your own protective zone, well, that is of a completely different quality than something that's aggregating around the web. <coughs> of course you could ask, how far you should go by interpreting this because if you host your website on like say Amazon uh, or Azure then well how much is that first party I don't know those are questions still have to be answered the bigger picture about this and is simply that the European Union has started to take an interest in the digital identity of its citizens and has very much taken an interest into the safety uh, and the control their citizens have over these digital identities. And the discussion, uh, it's, it's made, it's labeled the right to be forgotten. I like that from a philosophical standpoint, but it is mostly about autonomic control of personal information. A user should have control over who uses their own information. Uh, regulation should be based not only in the EU area, but mainly to businesses who do uh, work in the EU area. So if a European citizen does business with an American company, European laws should apply. This is something that is not yet this uh, firmly in effect because, well, the US opposes it and let's say that China mainly ignores it. But still, it's, uh, it's a step in the right direction. Um, users have to provide actually and tangible consent before their information has to be used. And I think this is a really good thing because I think that the average user has the awareness of a cucumber when it comes to like uh, their own private data and simply isn't interested. That's a, that is a problem which can only be solved by educating people and well, people only want to be educated if they are annoyed by the fact that they have to do something or scratch an itch or something. Um, the regulation, thank God, will now apply for the entire EU. So you don't get any more fantastic magical implementations of the law like we had in the Netherlands, thank God, because somehow I don't think the internet stops at the Dutch border. It's just my, imp my impression. Um, and there are some other things like it should be possible to take all of your personal information when you switch content or service providers. Um, the whole idea is simply that keeping information inside the EU is a good thing, both privacy-wise, both uh, economic-wise, because yeah, else we're simply giving it away and the EU is still the largest economic area on this particular planet. Would be nice if we do something with it. Oh well, so, so what, all this lawful stuff, it's fantastic. I um, hope you are happy that you now have, I hope not have a headache about all this legal stuff, but uh, so I use Google Analytics. 
actually, who does use Google Analytics here? I think, yeah, all right. Well, that's, that's a lot who don't, actually. That's, uh, last time I gave this talk, it was like, the whole room. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great tool. And actually, um, who of you is actually interested in uh, compliance to law in this point? Who has made it a point researching that before they started using Google Analytics? I see one hand, two hands. Two hand. Okay, cool. Wow, that's nice. Uh, and you don't all work for government agencies or NGOs or stuff like that. You also work for commercial. Cool. Um, because actually I know that it wasn't much of a consideration at first for me. It was like, hey, good tool, let's use it. And my clients ask for it. And then this whole debate started out. Uh, well, you could do one thing, screw that. Still, use Google Analytics, don't mention it to your users, stuff like that. I actually have customers who tell me not to implement stuff like cookie control because they don't think it's important. Yeah, what, what do you do with that? Do you actually tell your customer, like, oh, I'm not going to build your site because then you will be uh, breaking the law? Or, well, no, I started researching uh, other avenues. And that's basically also became uh, actual and current again since Google a couple of days ago decided to change uh, its uh, search uh, pattern again uh, in a way now that all search queries are being done over HTTPS, over SSL, which basically means that you don't get your keywords anymore. Well, that caused a bit of a panic in SEO land, as you probably can imagine. And, and of course, from a Google standpoint, yeah, well, that's business, they can do that. I don't have an opinion that much on that. But it's annoying because you somehow cannot utilize the tools you had because some third party entity decided to change something. Um, now, being that some third party being Google, that is something you probably cannot work around, but all right, it's still uh, annoying. And what do you do if your user actually does press no? Because most of the sites uh, I come across, and also I do a lot of audits, uh, they have like cookie banners, cookie, control, stuff like that, but they don't have do not track or opt out or something like that. But what do you do with a user who actually doesn't want to uh, have its information stored? Because pretty soon it's going to be legislation uh, too that this might be uh, enforced, uh, enforced as a default setting uh, on clients. There is actually talk about law uh, enabling laws to like enable do not track by default, which is interesting. But also from a business point of view, um, if you use a commercial platform, uh, whether it be analytics or giraffe or, or anything at all, what is your exit strategy? What if you at one time want to simply stop using it, use something else? Google is pretty doable, but there are also tools which are basically uh, some kind of file locker. You will not ever get your information out. I actually have clients who used some services which basically meant they had to make print screens of all the old report. There went the data. Um, and that, that is mostly the, uh, the argument the, uh, I have with clients these days is like, uh, what if Google changes something? What if you have a question that you cannot fulfill with standard analytics software? And what if you want to leave uh, that software? And it's not that much focused on law, it's focused on functionality. All right, and then Piwik comes in. So we have now entered the second part of this story. I usually now hear a sigh of relief. Um, what's Piwik? Well, Piwik is the example I'm going to focus on today. I'm going to show or talk about a couple of alternatives uh, that are also researched. But um, I found that Piwik is basically the tool I can go to, sit down at a client, demo it, and the whole question of Google Analytics simply goes off the table because it's actually that good. Uh, I don't know if it interests you that much, but once upon a time, there was PHP My Visits, which is now ancient and a dead project because it's now PWIC. It's actually pretty uh, modern. It's, it uses modern PHP uh, platform stuff. It's usable on shared hosting environments, which is a good thing. Uh, it integrates well with all major uh, CMSs. I even done implementations with uh, SharePoint. 
uh, on a couple of uh, occasions, which works also beautifully in completely au contraire to in built-in SharePoint uh, statistics, which suck. Um, it's pretty user-friendly. I don't know if any of you have ever tried stuff like AW stats, but it's horrible. It's don't ever put that into a user or give them Valium or something. Um, most importantly, it stores your data locally. Cookies are optional, and it's a big project. It's being used by a lot of websites. According to the PWIC websites, it's over half a million websites who use PWIC uh, today. So that's pretty nice. Are there alternatives? Yep, there are. It wouldn't be open source if there weren't like five alternatives. Uh, sure, we have open web analytics, and that is pretty on par. Functional-wise, it's pretty much on par with, uh, with PWIC. You can do a lot with that. Uh, it's a little older, and the Drupal mo module is not that polished, so that's why I skipped on that. You have crawl track. Now, crawl track is a really interesting thing because it claims to not only do uh, statistics but also block hack attempts. I don't know, but I don't need magic potion uh, in my website, and I really don't like my statistics platform to do security stuff. I use Moon Security for that. Well, then we have uh, AWS stats, Webalizer, Analog, W3 Perl. They're all Pillar or C-based, they're static log parsers, and they look something like something that you would control a space shuttle with. It's horrible. So those are the alternatives I have uh, researched. If any of you have any other experience, I'd be very interested to know because it's always good to have options, but I'm gonna focus on PWIC. So what does it do then? Uh, well, just about anything a normal statistics uh, program do, but then if you want with cookies so that you can actually track individual users or at least computers uh, and sessions. Uh, trouble nowadays, especially with the IP4 to IP6 uh, migrations, you start to see a lot of more address pooling, uh, IP-based uh, stats software. They really don't give any meaningful information. Uh, if you look in the Netherlands, for instance, you have mobile telephone providers who offer uh, proxy services for their mobile internet connection, which basically means like a million people connect over four IP4 addresses. Okay, there goes your information. Um, so PWIC does can use cookies to do that. It, it can do uh, click paths, entry exit pages, uh, all the stuff that you actually can do with uh, Google Analytics. Um, but there's more. You can also leave extra information in refers. You can use annotations. Uh, you can do e-commerce uh, implementations also. Uh, it's, it integrates very nice with Drupal Commerce for like uh, abandoned cart uh, detection. Uh, you can get automated email reports. You can do campaigns, stuff like that. It's, it's a complete platform. Uh, is that all? No. It can also do something very nice which Google Analytics cannot do. It can parse server logs. You can actually use it as a background tool. And why is that cool? Well, actually, because if your user decides to press the do not track button, by law, you are still allowed to parse server logs and get information out of that. So you can get a more, much more complete picture of the actual site user. Uh, there are also a lot of privacy-related options, uh, anonymized IP addresses, uh, purging uh, data, uh, and there's like 20 third-party plugins you can do a lot with, so check it out. Well, Drupal integration, wouldn't you know, there's a module for that. Um, and what does that do? Well, actually the same as the module for the Google Analytics, it stucks, sticks some JavaScript into your theme. Uh, to send information to the PIBIC server. Nice thing is it can do this both in HTTP as well as SSL. So that's pretty much uh, privacy concerned, uh, well thought of. Uh, it can uh, offer reporting from the Drupal administration interface. I'm gonna show you that a bit later because that's really nice. You can have actual reports, live reports in your Drupal uh, content editing uh, interface for your uh, content editors, um, and you can customize what, what to track uh, from within Drupal, which is also nice. So you can simply set up a PBIC server somewhere in your farm, have them connect to multiple uh, Drupal sites, and then from the Drupal sites configure what not and not to do. Uh, you still, however, need something 
at least within the EU, to uh, make sure your cookie, uh, or at least your law compliant, like uh, cookie control. But at least uh, using PWIC and the Drupal PWIC module, it's bringing you one step closer to independence from a lot of nastiness. Uh, how is it in an XSS sense? I hear because placing JavaScript on a page could be uh, dangerous. Well, it's not more dangerous than any other analytics tool in that manner. And you are still responsible for your site's security level. Um, and But security website audits is a different workshop. And I'll focus on PWIC now. Uh, what's offered out of the box for Drupal? It offers uh, visits, trends, visit times, uh, entry exit pages, refers, com commerce, anything. You can combine reports, you can show them to your uh, users. So that's pretty nice. Uh, but instead of talking about it a lot, I'm going to do a demo. And I hope uh, that the internet will not fail me, but in case of that, I did prepare a local host thing. Ah, seems to be working. All right, um, this is demo.pwic.org. And I strongly invite anyone to go there and simply have a look around, click around, best part about PWIC is the fact that it's so insanely easy to customize the interface and have that done by just about anyone uh, in your organization. They can set up their own filters, date ranges, stuff like that. They can select for specific filters here, not only dates. Y they can add widgets to their own dashboard. A user in PWIC can pretty much create his or her own experience and that's really nice that is something most other uh, traditional open source platforms really do not do it's like these are the reports stick to them you have visitor logs also with very nice graphs live visitor log you can see real time who is doing what on which website, which is also very nice. Usually in Google there is a delay of a couple of seconds, minutes between these things. It has device detection. Very nice in the age of responsive websites. It also does location mapping and it does a best effort on internet providers. How that is relevant, I don't know, but it could be useful. You could even detect browser settings to optimize your site for a certain audience. If you detect that your site is mainly being visited by only English speaking people, then it might not be the most interesting strategy to only put up a Czech website or Dutch. Operating systems, resolutions, and it resolves it all really nice. You don't get the craft of a dozen of identical browser strings, which only differ one letter or something like you get with AW stats, it simply clusters it very well. Also interesting, visit times, engagement, lovely report, see how, how much time your users spend on a website. This is either done by the cookies or by uh, the IP uh, translation. Uh, you can look for ex actions, entry exit pages, etc. Refers, campaigns, website social, search engines and keywords. Well, that is actually, here's the thing I was mentioning earlier. Keyword not defined is the thing that you will see a lot in SEO tools these days because Google simply decided not to provide them uh, anymore. That is a problem because that is actually information you would like to have. But the question is at what cost? Uh, this also has impact on the uh, inbuilt search engine of, uh, of Drupal, or at least uh, the Google version of the built-in search engine uh, by Drupal. I don't know, do, do you have users on websites who use Google to index their Drupal site and search their Drupal site? Do you have any? Or Okay, I come across it sometimes. So if you, if you have users like that, then you've lost the ability to track the inside searches as well. And that really sucks. But that's actually showing how hardening uh, and how fierce the competition in this market area is going. 
goals, very nice for both e-commerce and content steering. So take a look on P at PWIC and see what you can do with it. Uh, you can also have, and this is also a nice feature, have users uh, set up their own email reports. I've just switched to my local host environment because of this. You can also have widgets added to other sites. But let's look at the Drupal integration for a little bit. It has two modules. It has a module P Web Analytics, which integrates the actual JavaScript with the uh, Drupal site. And it has a module P Reports, which enables a administrator user to uh, have a look at the content of the actual PWIC uh, reports. How does that look? Well, like this. If you go to reports, we now have a new entry, PWIC reports, which shows just about anything I have just shown you just now, but then directly in the Drupal interface. Settings, times, etc. Configuration for this is all also pretty straightforward. Uh, tracking, which means what must this PWIC instance do? You have to provide the site ID, which you get out of PWIC, the installation. You have to point the module to the actual PWIC installation. That probably makes sense. Um, you can also track multi-site or multi-subdomain uh, implementation separately. You can track pages. You can exclude pages, anything you want. Just think of it as block configuration or something like that, context. You can uh, decide for which roles tracking code must be uh, enabled. You can allow users to customize which they want to be tracked or not. Uh, links and downloads can also be tracked, which is also nice if you're a content provider, you would like to see what people are doing. Internal search can also be tracked, but you have to switch it on. By default, it's off. And uh, here we go, universal web tracking opt-out, which actually is compliant with do not track. And this is pretty unique for most open source uh, tracking stuff. Page titles, you can add custom variables, useful for campaigns and stuff like that. And there is also what they call advanced settings, and you can add also some JavaScript code if you want to have uh, something uh, else on 2 PWIC you want to track, that's also possible through the interface. So you can basically configure it all. There is no theming, editing, or anything needed to uh, implement this, and it outputs a nice cacheable piece of JavaScript, so there is also no uh, performance penalty. This is the tracking reports. That's pretty easy. Just point it to the URL. If you don't fill in anything, it's using the URL that's tracking it. Provide the authentication string of the user. And you can restrict the sites your users can track through this implementation. That's pretty easy. I think that's not harder than, uh, than Google Analytics. And it works. I mean, I have here home, I'm very creative. I have a test page. And if I look into my PWIC, I can see that if I select the date of today, that there have actually been visits. And I can see I have done. Well, actually, that is pretty much it. So, no, not yet. Uh, what if I want to start using PWIC? I have already a lot of information stored in other systems, like Google Analytics. What to do now? There are migration tools. That is cool. 
So you can actually take your history from Google, put it into Pwik, and synchronize it. You can also do log file imports, so you can also oh, pick up the Apache logs from your past years or something, import them too. Really nice. And that was it. Any questions? Uh, if you have questions, please go to the microphones, by the way, because this session is recorded, just like anything else, and then your question comes back. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, yeah, nice talk. I, I, I never even actually come across Pewick. Um, I is it uh, something that's pretty easy to install? Uh, I mean, is there sort of like, if, if they have to get the dev guys to kind of set it up, because I, I take it you set it up on a server somewhere, and, um, and yeah. Yeah, the installation is actually go to pwick.org. And download a tarball, which is mostly not surprising. And of course, now the end. Oh no, it's doing. It's actually three steps: download it, install it, uh, and configure a MySQL database for it. And then you can run it. It's it, the installation of Pwick is definitely not harder. It's even simpler than installing Drupal. So if one of your admins can install Drupal, it can definitely uh, install Pwick. And the best part is you can set up one Pwik server for a whole uh, forest of websites. So you only have to have one okay. uh, dedicated and that server. that actually leads into my next question. So uh, how intensive is it? I mean, like, what sort of server do you need? So, so if you've got a 10 sites that are getting a lot of hits, I, I presume there's going to be a lot, sort of lo lot of logging and that sort of stuff going on. Yeah, but Pwik actually does asynchronous uh, processing. So uh, the actual logging of the uh, requests is done in a completely separate and very small, it's like 10 lines of PHP uh, code, which simply dumps the log and let the interface and the user who requests it do the rest. So it's it's not, uh, it's definitely not very much of an overhead. Okay. Um, last question. Yeah. Um, so you, you're talking about drop-offs and like say a shopping cart, figuring out when people are dropping off and that sort of thing. Would you still need to, I presume, add um, like on-click events or, or some sort of uh, specific tracking code um, to do that type of thing, or is it something that kind of does it? Um, uh, you can go to uh, things like e-commerce and goals in settings. Uh, let me check websites. And you can simply enable e-commerce here. And that will talk to uh, Drupal Commerce because of the Drupal Pwik module will translate uh, uh, commerce code. And, and if you had things like web forms, for instance, um, multi-step ones, and you wanted to figure out if people were dropping off after a couple of steps. Uh, you can uh, look with uh, entry and exit pages pretty well. And that's... Here, entry exit pages. You can see where somebody comes in and what their paths is and where they go out. You can see uh, also in engagement what the actual route is that users are doing. Uh, here also in the visitor log, you will see that this is my current user. Um, wait, this is my current user. And you see that this is already bundling the site request I made a couple of seconds ago into one session. So it tried to make a session of it so you can analyze the sessions <coughs> and see where users drop off. And this, of course, is also something you can automate. So yes, you can uh, have reports to see uh, where users stop being interested uh, and drop out. And I presume that then works with repeat visits and that sort of thing. And pick I'm sorry, I can, can you speak um, up? I, pr I presume that then works with repeat visits and when people come back to the site, kind of picks up that they've yeah. been there before and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, at least if you, <coughs> sorry, uh, if you have cookies enabled, then it will beautifully pick up the session again. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Anything else? You? Cool. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, uh, we are actually running Pivik, and um, uh, and then later we had to uh, install Google Analytics as well because the marketing people wanted it too, and the, um, their main argument was that Pivik lacks an integration of Google AdWords. So my yeah, question would be, <laughs> are you aware of anything that 
uh, that PIVIC is uh, capable of doing this? I mean, like to integrate in a way with AdWords or something? Uh, well, it's pretty hard for just about anybody else than Google to integrate with Google AdWords really well, um, which probably is one of the reasons why they're so damn successful. Um, in these cases, uh, this is not something that's solvable by PIVIC because the actual information that is stored uh, in the Google request is simply not being provided in any usable way by Google because it's all HTTPS nowadays. So basically you're, you're blocked. But what you can do is add uh, several variables, custom variables to uh, your uh, campaigns so that you can track what is uh, the actual traffic coming from a certain uh, server. And actually AdWords come from a different referrer than uh, regular Google search, uh, up, uh, search actions. So you can differentiate uh, with that. But if you use AdWords, yeah, you, you, you basically have to use Google tools to do it well. Um, but however, once you're inside your own website, uh, especially due to the fact that PWIC can also parse logs and do stuff that you can actually do without scripting or stuff like that, you actually get a lot more information, a lot more factual information about uh, the behavior of people on your website. And that's also valuable. So I think it's two types of information. Each has its own merits. Any other questions right now? No? Well, thank you very much for being here. And if you do have questions, then look me up. There is a brief announcement from the organizers of the conference, will, which will be presented by this person here. Okay. Uh, could you do me a favor and hold up that somewhere? Sir. Hi, everyone. Uh, I've just been asked to make an announcement, which we're trying to feed out some information to people who are attending on the site builder's track. Uh, so I'll just read it out to you. Uh, Drupal.org Content Working Group uh, wants to improve Drupal.org for site builders. One thing they're working on is building landing pages, uh, pages where you can find relevant information around site building topics. Uh, they're working on finding out what has to be on those landing pages. And that's where you can help. So if you have 30 minutes to talk about how you figure things out with Drupal uh, using Drupal.org, leave your name and some contact details at a form which you'll find online. Uh, it's uh, bit.ly uh, SB interview. Uh, so that's site builders interview. Uh, if you'd like to take part in that, um, working group members will contact you and set up a, a time when you can have that chat. Thank you.